Hi everybody, this is Mr. Zarzik, and welcome to my basement and another edition of Physics Underground. Uh, today we've got the Curve Mirror Lab. Okay, so setup goes like this, mounted on this little plastic stand I have. Uh, this is a concave converging mirror, and then the other side we have a convex diverging mirror. We'll be using the concave converging for the majority of this, and I've got it mounted at the end of these two meter sticks. Okay, you'll see why here in just a second. All right, over uh, mounted on top of this meter stick, okay, I've got this little picture of a ghost with the word focus. Okay, this is going to be the object that I'm going to place in front of the mirror. Okay, and so it sits on this little stand, and so we measure what's called the object distance, is, which is just the distance from the mirror to where my object is that's placed in front of the mirror. So this is distance in centimeters we're going to use today. Okay, um, and I've also got this connected to a light bulb. You can see, so that's just to throw a bunch of light on the object to make it really bright. In a minute here, we're going to be turning off the lights and doing this lab primarily in the dark. Okay, and then over here on this other meter stick, okay, I have a little mounted note card. And this is going to serve as my image image screen. The, if you remember from earlier, the concave converging mirror is capable of producing real images, which are images that are produced out in front of the mirror and capable of being projected onto a screen. Well, this is the screen that we're going to use today. So when we talk about screen, we're not talking about like a screen on like a phone or a tablet. Okay, we're talking about the kind of screen that you would get when you would go, say, to a movie theater. And if you think about what that really is, it's it's just a it's just a flat surface where we can project an image. Okay, and so this is a much smaller version of what you would see um, when you went to the movies and looked at the screen, and we'll be projecting some images onto it here. And so what we're going to see happen is is that when I turn on this light and then turn off the room lights, okay, we're going to be able to produce a real image on this screen, but. To get the image into focus, we're going to have to adjust the location of our image screen to just the right spot to where our image comes in focus. And then that distance is measured from the mirror to the, to the screen. We call it the image distance. Okay, so we have object distance versus image distance, and we'll be varying both of those. All right, so let's get the lights off and let's get started. Okay, so just so you can see what's going on here, if I take the shade away, you can see I've got the light bulb in front of the little focus book ghost. That's my object, okay? And the distance from this over here to the mirror, that's the object distance. So I'm going to put this shade in the way just so we can kind of focus a bit more on what's going on with the card here. So the light is reflecting off the mirror over here. And it's bouncing onto the card. Now, right now, all you're seeing is this unfocused ball of light. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the position of the card until I get a focused image. Okay, I hope you can see that. There's the little, there's the little ghost being projected on to the screen over here. And hopefully you can see this. Take it, put my finger in there just so you can see me wiggling it around. Okay, so it's pretty small, but you can also see what's important here is that the letters are on the top and the ghost is on the bottom whereas if I look at the actual little the little ghost okay you can see it's it's just the opposite okay the ghost is on the top and the letters are on the bottom okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the object forward a bit here so I put it now closer to the mirror okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and again I'm just going to put the screen in the way so I can turn the light bulb up brighter. Okay, and now when I do this, look. Okay, the image that I get, it's a little bigger now. Now it's kind of hard to see from this perspective, but the card is actually a little bit farther away from the mirror than it was before. And so what's happened is, is that the image distance, so the distance from the mirror here out to the image screen, which is the little note card, has gotten bigger, okay? And so let me continue to do this. I'm gonna take and move the ghost printed on the card in front of the light bulb. That's my object, that's the thing that's casting the reflection onto the mirror. I'm gonna move that forward. I'm gonna try to put that screen in the way to block out some of this ambient light here. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up. Okay, so it's a little brighter. Notice now on my screen, it's out of focus, so I actually have to move it. I actually have to move it backwards 
to get it into focus, okay? And you can see the image that I'm getting is getting even bigger. Okay, so let me do this, let me do this again now. I'm gonna take and move my ghost forward. So that's even closer to the mirror. Okay, and again, I'm gonna tuck that. So we block out as much of the light as we can. And so to get the image into focus, look at that, I gotta shift it even farther back. And look at how big it is on the card now. Okay, it's getting huge. So that the whole image of the, the focus and the ghost, it doesn't even fit all the way. Um, something else too, if I compare where the two of these are right now, I hope you can see this. This is the distance that the ghost is at from the mirror. The card is actually back a little bit even farther. So now the image distance is now larger than the object distance. So we've seen the image distance to be smaller than the object distance. We obviously passed where the two are equal. Okay, and now we're looking at where the image distance is larger than the object distance. I bet you I could play around with this just a little bit. Let me see if I can get it, if I move it back just a hair. To where I can get the two of them to be just equal. That's probably about as close as I'm going to be able to get here. Okay, and what's interesting is at this spot, this is the point to where the image distance and the object distance are equal. This is also the, the kind of the sweet spot where the size of the image that I get on the card is the same size as the object that I put in front of the mirror. So if you look at the, let me turn this down a little bit. So if you look at the words, the focus words on the card, the size of the letters versus if I compare that to what I get on the image on the screen, the letters are about the same size. Okay, so that's the idea. So I'm just gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna move my ghost really close. Do my best to block out as much of this light as I can. And you'll see that I have to keep moving back. Oops, the card to get it into focus. So look at that, it's in focus way back here. You can actually see the, the light bulb, there's the bottom of the circle. Pretty cool. Look at how big that is. All right, now something interesting happens where at some point, if I take and I shift this like really close, okay? Look here, I see there's the, there's the light on the card. All right. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to block it all out here, but I'll do my best. At some point, No matter how far back I move the car, look at how far this is. Or how close for that matter either. I'm never able to get a focused image of the ghost. And what's happened is, is now the distance from the, the ghost to the mirror, that object distance is now less than the focal point or the focal length of the mirror. And so what's happening now is, is that the image that I'm now producing is no longer a real image, which means it's no longer projectable. The image is now virtual, which means it's only visible when looking into the screen. So let's move the camera and see if we can get a shot of that. Okay, so hopefully you can see this all right, but I've got the, I've got the ghost and it's real close to the mirror. It's inside that thing that we call the focal length, which is the distance from the mirror to its focus point. We'll look at what that means in a minute. All right, but this is a case where we can no longer project the image onto the screen and so if I take and I adjust the mirror just so we can try to see the reflection there he is okay so there's the face of the ghost notice that the ghost is right side up okay you can see the light bulbs the F is no longer upside down okay and the point is is that now what we've got here I mean it's really big so they've got the head of the ghost that you can see in the mirror if you look to the right you can see the the, the silhouette of the ghost through the card there. So now we've got um, magnification and right side up. So with the concave, we've got all these different uses and we're still not done yet, but even just think about what we've got so far. We've got a case where we can produce an image onto a screen, we can project it, okay? And that image can be bigger or smaller or the same size. So there's plenty of practical applications that I'm sure you can think of it. Or if the object distance is less than the focal length, 
well then we get an image that's it's virtual now we can't project it onto a screen but it's but it's magnified it's really really big and it's right side up so i bet you without thinking about it too hard or too long you can think of some practical applications for that too okay so next i want to show you two different ways that we can determine the the focal length of our concave converging mirror remember the focal length is just the distance from the mirror to the focus point Okay, so to do it, I've changed around the setup a little bit. Um, I've got the I've got the image screen, so the little note card is still on the one meter stick. Okay, but I've removed the light bulb because I'm not going to use it for this. What I use instead is way off here in the distance. I have a flashlight sitting on this uh, stack of, of boxes. Okay, and it's shooting at the mirror, and I've got the mirror set up so that the light coming from the flashlight from really far away bounces off the mirror onto the card. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like in the dark in a minute. All right, but the idea here is that with the light source so far away, okay, any of the light that makes it to the mirror is all traveling in essentially the same direction or like all the light rays are all parallel to one another. Um, just think like there's plenty of light that's spreading out from the flashlight, okay, but the, the light that's spreading out, that light is going to miss the mirror and not hit it. It's so only the light that's traveling in a very straight line from the flashlight to the mirror is going to hit it and bounce off. And because that distance is big, all those light rays are essentially parallel to one another when they bounce off the mirror. Okay, so let me switch camera angles and turn off the lights and I'll show you what the reflection looks like on the note card and how we use that to get the focal length. Okay, so I've got the camera down on the table here and you can see this is the concave. All right, so if I flip it around so that it's facing the light bulb, Okay, and you can actually see here a little ball of light that's on the note card. Okay, so that's the reflection coming off the, the mirror from the flashlight and bouncing onto that note card. Now, it's actually bright enough to see this, but you can see if I move it closer, okay, the size of that ball changes. All right, so there's actually a spot right about there. Okay, that's Lydia in the background where the light is the most focused, and it's that's the point that we call the focal point. If we measure the distance from the mirror to the card, where the card is located at the focus point, we call that the focal length. Okay, so I've got the setup switched around again. Uh, what I did here was I've got the light bulb sitting on the meter stick. Uh, when I use the flashlight, I measure the focal length of about 23 and a half centimeters from the mirror. So that's where I've got the, the light bulb sitting in, at that 23 and a half centimeters. So then when I Put the the mirror here in front again. It's the it's the it's the con it's the concave converging. Okay, and so when I do this on the piece of paper here, I just get this ball of light. And as I move the piece of paper away, it just stays that same ball of light. It stays about the same size. In fact, you can actually see it out there on the wall. Um, if you look to the to the dark wall on the right side of the screen, you can actually see. Let me wiggle it around. Just moving the mirror. That's the that's that same spot of light. So so really, what's going on here is that all the light from the light bulb is being reflected parallel to all the other light that's being reflected off of this. Uh, you looked at this in practice about eight one. There was a candle at the focus point of a concave converging mirror, and all the light bounced off parallel because really we've just made a spotlight, a headlight, a flashlight. Okay, all the lights just coming out in a single beam, which is pretty neat. Okay, so last but not least, I've switched around my setup. I've replaced the, the concave mirror here with this convex mirror, just so you can see it. Okay, so there's the convex. Okay, bulges out in the middle of the concave is on the other side. All right, and I wanted to show this to you with the lights on first, just looking in the mirror, just so that we can see the, the card with the ghost on it. So let me change camera positions, hang on. Okay, so what we're looking at is the ghost is actually in front of the convex. Um, it's just off screen. If I flip the light on and off, hopefully you can see that there is something going on out there. Okay, and if I take and I move this closer, okay, the closer I get, the more visible the image becomes. And I'm not sure what's going to look better with the light on or with the light off. But you get the point that with the convex, the image that we get is a lot smaller. So even if I bring it up this close to here, you can just kind of make it out. Okay, everything is shrunken down. So 
So there's the ghost. It is visible in the mirror. Then here I just kind of jumped in a bit. You can see here's the little card mounted on top of the light bulb. There's the image of the ghost, right side up, smaller. All right, and then I've got the, the ghost light on, so this is my object. Um, hopefully by now you already know that with the convex diverging mirror that we don't get a real image. We can see it in the mirror, but we can't project it onto a screen. So no matter where I move my card, hopefully you can see this, that we never really get anything distinct on the card at all. Okay, and it doesn't matter if, if the object is far away or if I, like, if I move it closer. Okay, like I just never really get anything at all on the card because the light that's coming in, it's hitting, it's getting spread out, it's getting diverged away, so we don't get anything clear on the screen at all. The images that we get are virtual, which means they're located behind the mirror, so there's no way we can project them out onto a screen out in front of the mirror. Okay. All right, this is Mr. Zarzik and you've just watched the Curve Mirror Lab from my basement. So we hope you enjoyed Physics Underground. See you next time.